getting to know each other, exchanging ideas, stories, and laughs. No! Sometimes in life, we reflect on old memories that left a long-standing great impression, only to revisit those memories and feel let down. This happens frequently when watching an old dated movie, or can even happen when talking to an old childhood friend and realizing you've both grown apart from each other. This doesn't necessarily mean that the memories were bad, but rather they represent you and the world around you at that time specifically. The Simpsons was one of my favorite TV shows growing up. I have fond memories of watching marathons on the Comedy Network with my dad as we sat on the couch binge eating potato chips. As the longest running animated TV series of all time, there were bound to be some video game adaptations. Unlike a lot of animated series video game spin-offs, The Simpsons has generally done an excellent job of making really strong video games. It doesn't matter the genre, from arcade beat-em-ups to racing games, clearly The Simpsons name brings a certain high standard of quality. If you ask any fan what their favorite video game from the series is, you're likely to get the same response. Hit and run. This Grand Theft Auto clone took the world by storm when released for the GameCube, PlayStation 2, and Xbox in 2003. And while I believe this is an overall great game for the time, I'd be lying if I said I felt it aged well. At the young age of 8 years old, I have cloudy memories of playing a friend's older brother's copy of GTA Vice City on his PS2. Not knowing much about the series, or even being old enough to comprehend the plot, I remember being at home and mentioning that I wanted a copy of the game for my birthday or for Christmas. That was right around the time of the hot coffee mod on Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, sparking outrage on every local news outlet. Needless to say, my mom wasn't a fan of the idea of me virtually hiring prostitutes and shooting up strip clubs. Luckily for me, I spent most weekends at my uncle's house who had a copy of the next best thing, The Simpsons Hit and Run. The Simpsons Hit and Run is widely regarded as one of the best Grand Theft Auto clones of all time. But what makes it stand out is its excellent environments and voice acting that perfectly capture the remarkable feeling of Springfield. Questy, listen carefully. Aliens are handing out free laser guns and cola that makes you go crazy. It'll be a massacre. The streets will be littered with lasered off limbs and heads. Yeah, right. And I'm getting into the Country Western Hall of Fame. It just ain't gonna happen, kid. When playing this game as a kid, I wasn't very focused on progressing through the storyline, but instead, spent most of my time exploring the city, stealing cars, and kicking children. It was only fairly recently that I went back and played through the whole game with the intent of beating all the missions, only to have a fairly miserable time doing so. The plot is pretty much what you'd expect out of a Simpsons game. Robot bees invade the city, Mr. Burns does some shady stuff, and everyone's favorite aliens Kang and Kodos abduct Bart and give him memory loss. It's actually a very solid and interesting story, and is reminiscent of watching a good few episodes of the TV show. Throughout the game's seven chapters, you play as Homer, Bart, Marge, Lisa, and a strange but great choice of fifth character, Apu. Excuse me, nice Mr. Shopkeeper person. Have you seen a hovering death machine? No, nothing specifically of the hovering kind, no. Oh! <laughs> Remember Apu? He was the beloved Indian guy in the show before woke culture cancelled him. I could go on about how as an Indian man myself, I loved Apu, and wasn't at all offended by his accent or apparently racist stereotypes, but that's not the point of this video. Although the plot is entertaining and creative, getting through it is a bit of a nightmare. In each of the 7 chapters, you have 7 missions. Most of these missions consist of doing the exact same thing you did in the previous chapter only with a very slight variation. For example, in chapter 1 when playing as Homer, one of your missions is to collect a certain amount of game boxes. You do this by ramming your car into the delivery truck, causing it to drop them. Every time you hit the truck with enough force, a game box falls out. In Chapter 3 when playing as Lisa, you have to collect a certain amount of flat meat by ramming your car into Cletus's truck over and over again. The same hit and collect mission type is in pretty much every chapter. You'll also find carbon copies of almost every other mission type in each chapter, which cause the 49 missions to feel extremely repetitive. This wouldn't be so bad. But the infuriating broken AI causes other drivers on the road to constantly cut you off several times throughout the missions, forcing you to restart. This is particularly frustrating during the racing missions or the double missions, where you have to do multiple tasks before the mission is completed. I'm all for difficult video games, but difficulty caused by unfair factors is just not enjoyable. You do have the option to skip missions, but that shouldn't be a requirement to get through the game while enjoying yourself. Even with the disappointing missions and the garbage AI, 
The parts of the game that Hit and Run does well are done so well that it's still really fun to revisit and mess around with. The simplicity of the on-foot mechanics makes it enjoyable to cause havoc around the city while collecting the 7 cards in each level. The multiple and often hilarious unlockable outfits and vehicles makes it worth scavenging the town for coins, and the smooth feeling driving makes it a joy to break through shortcuts and run over every breakable in sight. Even with its obvious flaws, I can safely say The Simpsons Hit and Run is an overall good game, and is fun to pop in when you're looking to kill some time and really feel like you're inside of The Simpsons universe. Just don't expect Grand Theft Auto quality missions from this fan-adored copycat. I'll take the time here to say a special thank you to Longplay Archive for allowing the use of their gameplay footage throughout the video. I don't have a capture card, so retro video games that aren't available on modern consoles are very difficult for me to get high quality gameplay footage of. I'd also like to say thank you to all of you who watched this video and made it this far. So as a thank you gift, like all of my retro reviews, I'm giving away a complete in box copy of the game for PS2 to a random viewer. All you have to do to enter is like, comment, and subscribe. Giveaway details are in the description, and until the next retro review, Bye everybody!